Well, my, my background suggested that I was, I, I reported to either political appointees or politicians for 11 years in my career. So my scars are not on my tongue, they're as psychological. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the tasks that, uh, that uh, was part of the pre-discussion was, uh, so what would this mean to some, in, to a healthcare system that isn't at the level of development that a Intermountain is? What about real world doctors and community hospitals that aren't part of a system that's been doing this a long time? How, how might this translate? What might drive it? What might sustain it? So I thought I would talk a little bit about, you know, a system of community hospitals, which ACA, with primarily voluntary medical staffs. Ah, okay, good. Um, so first takeaway from our system is we're big. big. Health systems come together first, I think, to manage capital and to defer risk, but then they come together and they realize they can do operations better, so they can purchase things together, they can, uh, uh, they can run IT together, they might do billing together, there's a variety of things that are better, self-insurance, so forth. The third thing that really is powerful with health systems that I think is relatively new is that we can <clears throat> begin to approach clinical care in a more systematic fashion and build the infrastructure to really drive uh, the adherence to evidence uh, in a more consistent fashion. HCA, a lot of big numbers. We are big, but we're primarily community hospitals, two academic medical centers out of 165 hospitals. and. We have, we credential 65,000 physicians, but about 30-some thousand are really active at any given time in a meaningful way, and about a tenth of those are employed. Uh, and I will tell you, and you may agree with this, employed physicians are not necessarily engaged physicians. So um, we have an initiative we call Clinical Excellence. So the question really is, how would we partner with physicians to detect and reduce unintended variation in care. Variation between uh, uh, patients, but also variation from the evidence. And uh, the fear was because most of uh, the longer term executives in HCA had the experience that when you push doctors to improve their quality, they take their patients to another hospital nearby, or they might be incentivized to do that. And there were good examples of large lucrative practices that decided to go to a different hospital uh, because they were being challenged. And so we wanted to do this in a way that engaged them to improve the quality of their care, not to leave our, to leave our system. And we did a pilot study in uh, uh, Nashville, basically, to, to look at this. And what we found, more than anything else, the take home for me, because I sat through a lot of the physician meetings, was that basically physicians weren't getting a lot of feedback on how they were doing. Uh, we talked about giving them feedback. They, they certainly were used to getting feedback when they, when they knew their GPA to seven decimals when they were pre-medical students. But when they got out into practice, they, got, you know, they, got, they knew how much they made, how much money they made. They knew how many um, uh, charts were in arrears with the medical records department. They knew how many patients liked them, knew how many times they got sued. But day to day, did they follow, uh, follow uh, evidence uh, in their practice? And uh, what was that evidence and how did excuse me, how do they progress? Uh, not so much of that. And when, when you ask them what they would like to get back, and then you worked with them to give, it, give them that and other things that you could get, they, they were tremendously engaged. And furthermore, <clears throat> if you set up a system uh, to do that, uh, they become leaders in that system. Uh, the clinical excellence uh, that we're building and have been building for the last four years starts with the metrics. So we use our data systems. We have a clinical data warehouse not as old, probably not as big or as robust, and probably has more missing elements than Iron Mountains. But we have a significant uh, clinical data warehouse that provides a glimpse into where the variation is occurring. And we allow our facilities then to decide which ones they want to target for the, uh, for the upcoming period of time. Then we uh, have built a knowledge center, and these are uh, PharmDs, uh, uh, you know, some subject matter experts, some physicians, others, who will go to the literature, and we have a turnaround time of about two weeks. If uh, any of our teams in the field have a question they would like to get answered, we develop a, you know, essentially a review of the literature uh, about their specific issue, and we place that on our intranet. And uh, so that we don't want our physicians necessarily in the library. We want them reading the papers, understanding the papers, deciding what the next action items might be. And therefore, we should therefore set our targeted performance at what we think is <clears throat> the best targeted performance that we can determine uh, from today's uh, literature and guidelines. And then a key piece is, uh, is structuring a, uh, um, a plan and then supporting that plan. Typically, 
in the past, when we've, when we've wanted change to occur, we assign it to busy people. And we don't uh, create individuals, project managers, uh, you know, other experts who can actually drive that change. So we've staffed at a division level performance improvement, project management. Uh, that's their job, is to take the uh, things that we find that we want to work on, the, piece, the information, or the, um, sorry, the performance we want to improve, and to drive that change. And then final key piece is to provide continuous feedback to the teams about how performance is changing and to make sure that that performance feedback on a regular basis goes to the executives in the company. So they are part of an ongoing regular review of how that performance is going and highly supportive of it. So it has to, we think, be across the whole organization that they buy into this. This is an example of, of a dashboard around sepsis. And uh, without going into a lot of detail, uh, provides such things as ongoing, uh, trailing six-month mortality scores, uh, direct variable costs, time to antibiotic, time to flu uh, significant, I'm sorry, time to fluid resuscitation, uh, serum lactate levels ordered and obtained, blood cultures ordered and obtained, antibiotics chosen. So it integrates all the pieces we think are part of the ideal care, gives a feedback both to the institution and to the individuals involved. And it's a generic uh, approach. It's, although this is for sepsis, we have it in other areas that we're interested in, uh, whether it's uh, respirator weaning, whether it's uh, blood usage, uh, and a variety of other things that uh, we have identified as, uh, as variable, uh, which we're, we're trying to reduce variation. Um, second key, I think, to, to developing learning organization and sustaining it is strategic partnerships. You have heard uh, a wonderful presentation about the reduced MRSA trial, uh, where there's both government and academic uh, affiliations. We have other examples as well uh, where we've worked with uh, uh, professional organizations like the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology and uh, with nonprofit organizations as well. Um, one of the interesting things I think is similar to the reduced MRSA trial was in, was in OB where the March of Dimes came to us and said, we believe that there's too much induction of pregnancy before 39 weeks of gestation. And there really wasn't a lot of evidence uh, to support or uh, that contention. We were able to look in our data system and show that uh, the babies at 37 and 38 weeks had significantly higher risk of going to the neonatal intensive care unit. At the time, we were making a lot of money on NICU days. Uh, so it was a uh, clear uh, value decision by our uh, uh, C C-suite group to say the right thing to do is obviously what's right for the babies. And uh, so we immediately uh, developed uh, uh, policies and uh, implemented those to uh, try to eliminate all elective deliveries before 39 weeks. That's subsequently become common knowledge. We published some of those uh, papers. It's, because it's been adopted by most insurers now, so you uh, are, are highly incentivized uh, to make sure that happens. Uh, but again, uh, uh, it's something that you can, um, you can do in a large system is look retrospectively at data to see what actually happened under certain parameters if you have that uh, data collected. Um, so what, what, what might be some of the business imperatives? Uh, it's already been stated that uh, we believe that, that good quality care is uh, the most uh, effective and efficient. We think that's the case. We see reduced variable cost. We use better value medications if we choose the right ones. We have fewer complications. We shorten our length of stay and so forth. A couple of other things, though, we also noticed that, uh, um, that the best physicians are uh, the ones that embrace uh, the dialogue around clinical excellence uh, to the greatest degree. Um, so it's... Uh, uh, if we lose any physicians, we think there'll be those who are uh, maybe not the ones we necessarily want to retain, whereas the ones who uh, really embrace this, uh, that's the case. One of the side effects of the reduced MRSA trial that we haven't talked about, but I think was a critical one, uh, was that our nursing staff, when they saw the publication and felt their contribution to, to, uh, to knowledge about the best ways to treat, treat patients, uh, were extremely proud. So there was a, an altruistic heart that was touched uh, across the, uh, the organization, knowing that they had contributed through their uh, use of uh, uh, being participation in this study 
uh, to, um, they, that they had contributed to the knowledge and that many other lives across many systems worldwide really uh, could be saved uh, by the knowledge that they were contributing to, which is I think uh, also very uh, important. I mean from a pure business uh, sense we are competing, we do want to grow our market share, we do want to do that based on an earned reputation for quality. Um, just a couple of slides to say we think it's very important to create accountability structures. Um, so we don't go about this, uh, um, you know, in, 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 unless we really mean it and say that, all right, so there's sepsis teams, they meet on a regular basis, but we check and see how they're doing on a regular basis at division level, and we check and see how the divisions are done, uh, doing also at a national level. So it's, it's critical that uh, these investments do uh, return uh, uh, outcomes. There we go. Um, let's go to this. Another key piece is that we do our best to estimate the impact. All right, so this is just a potential example with, uh, with sepsis. If we can reduce the incidence of sepsis in our facilities by 10%, and we think we're about a quarter of the way there, then, uh, you know, obviously these are back of the envelope calculations to some degree. You have to make a lot of assumptions to do them. But there's a significant number of lives that can be saved and a significant savings on reduced variable costs. So um, I think that sustainability and, and the will to fund this, uh, as, as Brent pointed out, uh, is very strong if you, if you do the math carefully and well. Uh, and then we try to share those achievements uh, you know, widely so that everyone feels they're part of that team because it does take the entire team to do that, build it, sustain it. And then finally, I say, uh, you know, we're uh, we're strong believers that uh, we need better clinical data uh, uh, and to combine that with our administrative data, we believe there's both commercial value in building that, but also tremendous uh, uh, clinical value. And uh, I think one of our biggest challenges with the data warehouse is getting the decision support uh, built, but also deployed at the moment of decision in a way that it's helpful to physicians rather than impeding uh, their delivery of care. I think if we can do that, that'll be the, the most important to really drive evidence to the bedside and to, to build the conditions for which we can ask to continue to ask questions about what the best uh, treatments are. So with that, um, I'm done. We'll move on. <laughs>